Can we make it the original ones, like with the show, and then the uh, mayor, and then the animal shelters? Like I think that your city attorney is going to make a recommendation how she wants it. She told, she she told me she's going to do a staff report. Is she not yet? Well, she's not here yet. But it's further down on the agenda. She will be, right? Hopefully. Well, welcome everybody to the August 1st, 2022 Post CFD Finance Committee meeting. Um, Anyone uh, wishing to uh, speak under public comment, please use the, uh, if you're on Zoom, please utilize the raise your hand function. If you're here, please approach the table. Um, with me in the meeting room is Dr. Aldridge and R uh, Richard Johnson. Councilman Escabel is on Zoom. Um, we will only be discussing the items listed on the agenda. And uh, before we get started, and I have uh, Jen read the first item, just want to thank our outstanding city staff members who worked so hard over the last 10 days. They work hard every day, but particularly the last 10 days, I talked to some folks from sanitation who were working hard at 2 o'clock in the morning every day. I see uh, Jason Sanchez here today. I know he keeps crazy hours. How you're still standing, Jason, I don't know. Um, but we're very thankful for your work and, uh, and for our community to put on such a huge event. Um, with that, Jen, if you could please read the first item. Number 6A, restaurant liquor license application filed with the city clerk's office for Los Aguacates Incorporated doing business at Tres Amigos Family Mexican Restaurant, 1802 Del Range Boulevard, Suite 2, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Excellent pronunciation. Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> Staff Thank report, you. please. Mr. Chair, Christian City Clerk, the restaurant license before you has been reviewed by applicable city departments, and the Wyoming Liquor Division has, has been deemed eligible. Uh, some of you may recall their first restaurant on West Lincoln Way opened about a year ago, and this is for a second location. I try to answer any questions you may have. Thanks, Chris. Stand by. Is there any comments or questions from members of the public? Do I have a motion from the committee? I would so move. It's been moved and seconded. Comments or questions from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor of the application, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Ken, um, Ken, you're an I, correct? Yes, I'm an I. Great. No one's opposed. That item moves forward. Next item, please. Number 10, ordinance second reading. Amending ordinance number 4411, defining the terms and conditions of employment for sworn officers of the Cheyenne Police Department for fiscal year 2022 to 2023. Staff report. I believe we have Chief Francis go online. Must mail, please. I'm here. Have you got me? We got you. We do, Chief, and uh, thank you to all of your folks, your men and women who uh, worked so hard the last 10 days as well. Um, oh, well, th good. thank you for the recognition, Councilman. It's, uh, as as everybody knows, it's uh, it's quite the undertaking, but I, I think things went well, and uh, um, we all came through on the other side so far, so uh, here we are. Great. Thank you, Chief. Uh, um, are you... You're going to speak on this item, sir? Yes, in, unless uh, I, I didn't know if Craig Saney was going to be there, the president of the PPA. Um, if, he, if he's not there, I'm more than happy to go through this. I don't think that he is, so uh, we'll turn it over to you. Okay, very good. So largely what you have before you is um, uh, just updated to reflect the current, um, current year. There are a few changes of note. Um, one being the the military pay, um, we've we've uh, proposed changes to bring us in line with generally how the rest of the city does it. Um, we had been in a position where people um, could voluntarily sign up for military duty and actually uh, at the end of the day make more than they were making here. So um, the the way that the the city intended by going back through 
um, some some various uh, documents was that they uh, be made whole essentially not not make more by uh, volunteering for military service so this uh, clarifies that um, the other changes of note is we brought back the clothing allowance which um, was budgeted for this year that went away during the COVID times and then the um, this reflects the ninth step that um, we talked about frequently during the budgeting process um, to to take effect January 1st and then the um, attached pay scales reflect that change in, in January. Um, otherwise, it's it's largely the same and I would be happy to entertain any questions you might have. Thanks, Chief. Stand by. Comments or questions from members of the public? Hearing none, do I have a motion? So move. It's been moved and seconded. Comments or questions from members of the committee? Dr. Aldridge. Uh, Chairman White, through you, I just, I was looking at this copy that we've received and there, uh, the changes tend to be in red, but um, for the clothing allowance, it there is nothing in red. So I'm guessing that, was that, it, we didn't reinstitute the clothing and equipment allowances, but it's not, noted here by a different color so i'm just wondering if that was just put out or if that's if there actually were more changes than what appear to be according to the text that we have uh Council, councilman white through you to dr aldridge um and my copy has it in red so i'm not i'm not sure what happened there under um on page five, number nine, clothing and equipment allowances, I, item A is in red on mine that um, returns back to the previously allotted $60, um, $60 per month clothing allowance for detectives. Uh, I, I'm not sure why, um, why your copy doesn't have it. Um, the only thing in red on, on this one are, are the date changes to reflect the current year, the um, previously spoken about military pay, uh, clothing allowance, and then the um, various items that reflect the ninth step. So as a follow-up question, Chairman White, are the detectives are the only ones who are entitled to the $60 per month clothing allowance? Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Other comments or questions from the committee? Hearing none, all in favor of this ordinance on second reading, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed. That item moves forward. Next item, please. Number 13, resolution supporting the Cheyenne Regional Airport Board in the application for and acceptance of federal assistance from the Federal Aviation Administration under the Airport <laughs> Improvement Program to assist in funding costs related to a reimbursable reimbursable agreement for the precision approach path indicator and localizer design and construction. Staff report, please. Uh, Nathan Banton, Deputy Director, Cheyenne Regional Airport. Uh, essentially what you have before you is a resolution requesting support in the application and acceptance of a grant from the FAA. Currently, they request that the city and the county sign as signatories on all of our federal grants. This particular grant is basically one part of the FAA giving us money to reimburse another part of the FAA for doing work on <laughs> their equipment on our airport. And I'd be happy to stand for any questions. Nothing like federal bureaucracy. <laughs> Seems to be how it works. Stand by. Thank you, Nathan. Comments or questions from members of the public? Hearing none, do I have a motion from the committee? I would move to approve. It's been moved and seconded. Comments or questions from members of the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor of this resolution, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed. That item moves forward. Next item, please. Number 14, resolution authorizing the submission of an application to the State Loan and Investment Board for a grant through Water and Sewer ARPA grant program funding on behalf of the governing body for the City of Cheyenne for the purpose of providing critically needed flood control at East Del Range Boulevard and Van Buren Avenue. Staff report. Chairman White, members of the Finance Committee, um, Tom Cobb, City Engineer. 
So this is one of these good opportunities that we come across, and this, this resolution is required as part of the SLIB application. So what it essentially is going to protect is the area south of Whitney Ranch and east of Whitney Ranch. So it will connect the two detention ponds that are haven't, one hasn't been developed yet, and the second one is the existing one that's already there. This system will go down Van Buren and then dump eventually into the Dry Creek section. So as a part of this, it's based on a point system for these ARPA funds. So the maximum amount we can receive, obviously, you can only you can go up to a maximum of a 15% match, but I, a, a minimum, I mean. So, but the more competitive you are, meaning the more that you match, the more that your ability to get the money. So I, on this, we placed a 50%. Um, the developer is going to participate in a portion of this. We has not been determined the exact extent yet, but that development agreement will be coming in front of you as well. So it, um, I guess we would design the system as far as a 50-year event, and our three points are based on our maximum match. Um, our project is basically shovel-ready because it's already in design, about complete, and it's in an EDA opportunity zone, which are all benefits to us to be able to get this money. And with that, I'll have any questions that you might ask me. Here. Thanks, Tom. Stand by. Comments or questions from members of the public? Give your line. Hearing none, do I have a motion from the committee? I would move to adopt. Second. Comments or questions from members of the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor of this resolution, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed, that item moves forward. Thanks, Mr. Cobb. Number 15C, agreement between the City of Cheyenne and the Cheyenne Animal Shelter for Animal Shelter Services. Staff report. Good morning, Stephanie Boster, Cheyenne City Attorney. And in preparation for this meeting, I printed out a document, so I'll hand that out. I've also emailed it to all of you. So what this document does is it, it tracks all the recommended changes to the <coughs> animal shelter contract. There's an original contract, and then there's five proposed amendments. So they're all together, and then there's one proposed amendment to the addendum. Um, and I apologize to Dr. Aldridge for having misspelled her name. <laughs> okay. And I do see Mr. Menser in the audience on behalf of the animal shelter. Um, but what I would recommend we do is go through, through each of these amendments by various individuals and either give them a thumbs up or a thumbs down, which will give me some direction for Monday's meeting. I am available for comments. There's going to be comments, just yeah. so you know. <laughs> and questions. Comments uh, or questions from members of the public? Can we just be, can I ask you a question? So you're asking for a thumbs up and thumbs down, but no amendment today. Do you just want to make a clean amendment for Monday, or what is your request? My, um, uh, Council Chairman White, through you, uh, my hope is that we can have one proposed amendment for Monday's meeting. So we're not doing five separate amendments at a city council meeting. I think that'd be the cleanest, but I'm sure. certainly open for whatever council would suggest. I'm I'm fine with doing that. So we'll take them amendment by amendment today. That's, Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Do I have a? Uh, there's no public, uh, no comments or questions from members of the public. Uh, do I have a motion from the committee? It's so moved. It's been moved and seconded. Comments or questions from members of the committee? Um, on the process. first, uh, I guess, on the first amendment that we'll discuss. So the first, the first one being the mayor's amendment on page two of nine. Correct. I have no questions on that one. Are there comments or questions from other members of the committee on the First Amendment, which is the Mayor's Amendment on page two of nine? Letter D. Well, we have to, um, we kind of have to uh, do a discussion on the first one and then uh, go out, go back out to the public and then, okay, um, yeah, yeah, sorry, I have no questions right now. Do you want to go, Chris? Chris? Mr. Chair, Chris, no, Stay right there. Um, for <laughs> procedural purposes, 
if the intent is to just discuss the amendments, you can do that without any motions. If your intention is to vote vote on an amendment, you will need to make a motion. Okay. And go back out to the public. But if I my in, thought was the intention was to just discuss them. Okay. And then the general one that got the most support would be the one that would carry over to Monday night. Okay. Let's. That's uh, That's correct, um, okay. Mr. Chairman. Through you. Let's go back and do that then. Is there any discussion then on the first amendment, which is the mayor's amendment, uh, page two of nine, section D? From members of the committee. Members of the public. Um, I would just say that. Uh, we're gonna have a full table, yeah, it looks like. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, we're not playing cards. Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, so the the proposed shelter um, amendments Brit here. Brittany, are, could you identify I'm, yourself for yes, the record? Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm Brittany Tennant, the CEO at the Cheyenne Animal Shelter. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the shelter also has proposed some amendments here under the same um, section, and this was in response to the mayor's amendment. It's my understanding from the commentary at Monday's meeting that the mayor just felt like uh, the internal operations of animal control didn't need to be in this contract, and I think that we're basically in support of that overall theory. But also we wanted to say that we feel like the city does have some accountability to the animal shelter. So instead of the nitty gritty of how the animals we thought this was a good section to put in, you know, where there's overlap and what our expectations would be in order for that partnership. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, Mr. Fountain? Mr. Chairman, through you, I'm Eric Fountain, Director of Compliance. I only have a couple of thoughts. One being, there's a lot of amendments here for this to go through this process at the table today and take them one by one. I think it would limit the amount of conversation that needs to be had on some of these topics. For two, I think it'd be best practice for us to, as we've done in the past, run this through the city attorney, um, Brittany being the representative of the shelter, myself being the representative of compliance, and then having the input of the council and having Stephanie's office, the attorney's office, be the primary point of contact to disseminate that information back and forth over the next couple of days to get this in front of the council. And I think we could do that um, with Frontier Days being over now. We have all players back to the table. I think we could achieve that relatively quick. There's a couple of ones, just the one that we have before us right now, that amendment being the mayor's amendment, requires one animal control officer. Our city policy requires all animal control officers be trained for euthanasia. While we do not practice that on the daily, it has to be supervised by a veterinarian and or be certified through that veterinarian practice. So there's a lot of those types of conversations that dovetail with these other amendments, and I think it would be a better practice for us to look at this as a whole. If you had comments from the council, take those into consideration and vet those back at this point in time, but to try to hash this out, I don't believe we could do this um, in a fashion that would be beneficial to all parties involved. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fountain, and I, I tend to agree with you and, and like that approach. So, um, that being said then, Chris, um, how would we go about achieving that then? Do we just, do we make a recommendation? Uh, Mr. Chair, there are a couple of things that you can consider. Um, the attorney has uh, handed out all the information. I guess that gives you guys some time to look at it and get back with either her or Mr. Fountain or, or the folks at the animal shelter. With any questions you might have? Um, and you can have no recommendation to keep it off consent. You can vote it on and you can pull it off of consent. There's multiple ways to achieve that, to be able to discuss it again Monday night off of consent again. The will of the committee to decide how they want to handle it today. Dr. Aldrich? Well, Chairman White, um, I think there are a lot of amendments here and I think that um, there are ones that we want to uh, look over. I struggle with the idea, quite honestly, that in this forum that we would be considering proposed amendments by the animal shelter since this is our agreement um, and they are in, in all due respect a vendor in this instance. Um, 
I also think that when we're spending over um, a half a million dollars, that this is something that um, even if it were to go on the consent agenda, I'm sure that my colleagues from Ward 1 and Ward 2 will pull off the consent agenda on Monday night just mm -hmm. because of the amount. Correct. So however you wish to proceed, I'm good with that. As the chair uh, does not vote on items in committee uh, unless there's a tie, which there's a quorum, so there wouldn't be, it would be, it would be my suggestion to perhaps move forward without a recommendation. Therefore, it's not on consent agenda. Give both council, uh, Ms. Tennant, Mr. Mincer, uh, Mr. Fountain, and our city attorney office a chance to. Uh, take a look at these amendments because there are a lot of them and it can get pretty confusing in this type of forum. So um, my suggestion, if my colleagues on the committee agree with me, would be to move forward with this item with no recommendation for Monday night. Is that amenable to, to you all? Yeah, fine with that. Chair, would you like me to consider the motion withdrawn then? Yes. We'll that, there were, that there was no motion, which is why we went back to public comment. I think we, I think we have to have Dr. Aldridge withdraw her motion. I would withdraw. Okay. Thank you. So Dr. Aldridge's motion, original motion is withdrawn. Uh, we're back on the main item. And um, I guess uh, we would call, go ahead, Chris. This is the first time I've ever come across something like this. Um, I had a main motion, but I didn't have any amendment motion. No, you're correct. Okay. It, you can simply just vote it down without withdrawing your motion. Just do that. work easiest for you. Okay. So all those in favor of this agreement between the City of Cheyenne and the Animal Shelter, please signify by saying aye. All those opposed? No. No. Okay, therefore, there is no recommendation on this item. It will be discussed again at the meeting of the full governing body one week from today. Thank you all. I apologize for any confusion. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you, Mr. Mincer, for uh, being here today. And we look forward to seeing you again and having conversations throughout the rest of this week. Thank you. <sighs> number 15, Next item. Number 15D. Agreement between the City of Cheyenne Civic Center and IATSE Local 229 for production services. Staff report. Mr. Chair, the Consensus Community Reckoning Event. Uh, so this is an agreement with uh, between us and the local union, IATSE, and that's for services to put on shows when our staffing levels don't meet the requirement of the show. Uh, generally, when they when it requires more than 22 people to bring a show loaded in, loaded out, that's when we call the union to bring in staff to support us. Uh, there's not a set dollar amount on this. It's just an agreement uh, because the, the cost would fluctuate based on the shows that come in. Uh, generally, we bill the shows uh, for the union's uh, labor, and so it's covered by the show when they come in. Um, and I'll do my best to answer any questions you have. Thanks, Jason. Stand by. Comments or questions from the public? Do I have a motion from the committee? I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from the committee? Mr. Aldridge? Chairman White, through you, I'm just curious. Um, it says local 229. Are they actually local or are they out of Northern Colorado? Uh, Mr. Chair, through you. I know they generally use local support first, but I think their main office is the okay. uh, actual uh, clarification, but I know they use local labor first. And is there, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Question. Is there a reason why, is it because of the expertise that we're using a union local rather than, for instance, uh, labor ready or express employment or somebody here locally? Mr. Chair, that's absolutely correct. Uh, a lot of the positions require technical experience. Jason, have, uh, just if you could give us a ballpark figure, how many times have we had to utilize something like this? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, it could be, it, it depends on the number of shows we have and the, the number, how large the production is, but it's not uncommon for us to use them six to a dozen times a year. 
Uh, we've had a contract with IOTSI for many, many, many years and a good partnership, but we do use them uh, for like Broadway shows, uh, some of the larger um, concerts and that requires more of a production. Uh, if there are no other comments or questions from the committee, I do have one. Uh, Mr. Johnson. During your negotiations, with this, did they bring up again about the timeliness of city council in regards to our schedule, in regards to payment? Because I know that was uh, Mr. Chair, through you. Uh, not to my knowledge, um, Andrew, our tech director, uh, worked with them on this, and I apologize he's not able to attend today. He is attending a family funeral. Uh, but I don't believe uh, there was any concern about our payment dates um, there. Question. Um, there are no other questions. All those in favor of this agreement, please signify by saying aye. 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 As no one's opposed, that item moves forward. Next item. Number 15E, agreement between the City of Cheyenne and Plan 1 Architects for architectural services for the Cheyenne Solid Waste Transfer Station original building roof replacement. Staff report. Sticky Nemechek, Public Works. Uh, this is to um, get someone to design, get Plan 1 Architects to design and do the construction administration type of thing for the uh, old portion of the transfer station uh, roof. It's uh, the original roof from a, uh, the transfer station was built in 1985. Uh, so that's the original roof. So we've got our money's worth there, I think. Um, they're expecting it to, the replacement cost to be around $500,000, I think. What they said in here. But uh, that, the, these funds will come from the solid waste fund. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Stand by. Thanks, Vicki. Comments or questions from members of the public? Hearing none, do I have a motion from the committee? I would so move. It's been moved and seconded. Comments or questions from the committee? I have Dr. One. Aldrich. Uh, Chairman White, through you, I was just curious. Um, Vicki, is that a flat roof out there? It is. Um, so will this design be to add a pitch to it, or is it just going to replace the, I'm guessing it's like a vinyl liner mm -hmm. that most flat roofs have? Uh, my understanding is it will replace the roof as is. Okay. And do we need to add a dollar amount to that motion? Probably it's twenty nine thousand yeah, one hundred ninety dollars. Do you want me to redo it? No. Okay. 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 Thank you. Um, other comments or questions? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Johnson. Thank you for actually looking at this. I know this is brought up under you know looking at recovery plans and all that other stuff. That was much low on my list because it was. Up Thanks, Vicki. 37 years is a good run, <laughs> particularly here. Yeah. We made it. Kidding. So, so if there are no other comments or questions, all those in favor of this agreement, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Um, opposed? Aye. Oh, Mr. Escobel is an aye. No one's opposed. That item moves forward. Next item, please. Number 15F, professional services agreement between the City of Cheyenne and Patrick Engineering Incorporated for the inventory condition assessment and data migration of the city facility assets to cardiograph OMS project. Staff report. Sticky Nemechek Public Works. This uh, is to inventory, do a condition assessment, and then data migration on the 12 facilities that we've got listed on here um, into cardiograph. So this is a, basically a combination of things that we're doing with OpenGov and cardiograph to get our facilities and uh, it's a maintenance program, basically. Figure out where we're at, figure out what we have to do, figure out how much it's gonna cost, and then put a plan together. So uh, they do some pretty interesting stuff with uh, 360 scanning, and uh, so I do have John Young from Patrick Engineering on the uh, on Zoom if uh, anybody would like to ask any questions that I can't answer, but uh, the cost uh, what is $175,000. We will use ARPA funds, and it, I uh, have just heard that we will need to add a federal provision exhibit to this contract. That is something we will, uh, if it goes on consent, we'll have to pull it off. 
to add that exhibit. Um, and that can be done before the next meeting? Yes. Oh, thanks, TJ. Okay, stand by. Thank you. Comments or questions from members of the public? Not to be hands raised, except for that Mr. Young has his mic off and he's ready to answer questions, I guess, if you have any. Great. Thank you. Um, hearing none, do I have a motion from the committee? I would make a motion to approve this name out, not to exceed $175,000. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments or questions from the committee? Dr. Aldridge. Chairman White, I just wanted to ask, um, has there been any consideration taken, or perhaps Mr. Young can answer this, about uh, security with this data and this information? Um, I know that right now, having digital pictures of city facilities and blueprints uh, in the public domain can become a security risk and a hazard. Um, and I'm just wondering what kind of cybersecurity there is around this type of data that's going to be available. Mr. Young, do you have an answer for that? Uh, yes, sir. This is John Young with Patrick Engineering. So the <clears throat> it's a combination of things. Number one, none of that information is made available with the exception of the end users that need to access it. Um, and that would be um, city staff in particular, in that it will be housed within a, a an environment that meets the security specifications of both cartograph software um, as well as um, those that are uh, available from another software that is used in concert with that, which is um, ArcGIS, which the city already owns. Um, these meet a number of requirements, um, both federal um, types of um, security um, specifications and um, we can specifically show the city um, each one of those. Thank you. Other comments or questions from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor of this professional services agreement, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Moves forward with Mr. Johnson as a no. Next item. Number 15G, professional services agreement between the City of Cheyenne and KLJ Engineering for the environmental commenting services for the City of Cheyenne's industrial facilities. Staff report. Good morning, Chairman uh, and staff members. Uh, Craig Avoy, Public Works. This is a contract with KLJ Engineering to update our SWIFT and SPCC plans for our street and alley, solid waste facilities, which are the transfer station, compost, and the landfill, our fleet site, and traffic shop. These are to be renewed every five years, and we're coming up on practice for $45,400, and I recommend approval. Thanks, Craig. Stand by. Comments or questions from the public? Do I have a motion from the committee? I would move to approve in an amount not to exceed $45,400. Second. Been moved and seconded. Comments from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor of this professional services agreement, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed. That item moves forward. Next item, please. Number 15H, lease agreement between the City of Cheyenne and the Cheyenne Airport Board for land to be used for community recreation and events, softball and baseball fields. That report. Speaking of Public Works, these next three items are all lease agreements with the airport. They own the property that we uh, place our Converse ball fields, our compost facility, and our weed and pest facility on. So this is actually for the next four year tax. So the first payment wouldn't be made until October, uh, until between July and October of uh, 2023 would be our first payment. Each payment um, does uh, increase each year by 2%, and that is noted in the uh, payment uh, in the contract. So, uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy. Thanks, Vicki. Stand by. Comments or questions from the public? I have a motion from the committee. I would so move. Approve. It's, moved, it's been moved and seconded. Comments from the committee? 
Robert. I just had one question, Chairman Moore, through you. Vicki, on the, because I showed the three different ones, and um, so I, I guess my question is, is are these, it, these are showing a 2% increase over the last contract that we had, I'm guessing? The first year will be the same, and then a 2% okay. increase for the second, third, and fourth okay. year. And um, I was just curious, are the, in, is the income that we receive from uh, the use of these fields and things like that, um, and then also the compost, does it pretty much cover this lease amount or not, even close? The, uh, I can speak to the compost facility. The compost facility does not make money. Okay. Uh, it never has it. or never will, okay. and it's because it's a diversion tactic to keep what landfill. out of the landfill, which is our most, airspace at the landfill is our most valuable when it comes to solid waste. So know that it wouldn't cover the compost facility. But um, weed and pest and the ball fields are not. But probably not, I'm guessing. Jason's shaking his head now. <laughs> I think we don't make money off these things. I was just hoping to break even. Yeah, Jason Sanchez can be breaking even from the. He just has to cover the, uh, the fees that we collect for the ball fields. Thank you both. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the warning. <laughs> Are there, um, okay, so comments or questions from members of the public? You already did that. I already did that, have okay. A motion. And I have a motion on this particular agreement. Yep. So all those, if there are no other questions on this particular yeah, agreement. I have to stay on purpose. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Johnson. We're close friends, but. Um, so <laughs> as far as this, so only on this specific other one, the compost and the, uh, the following one kind of made more sense. How would the funding mechanism for the sports field put into the 1% sales tax? Involving more stuff with infrastructure and things like that instead of all fields. How did we come to that funding mechanism? I can answer that. I don't know if you know more about it than I do, but during the Spiker administration, there was a, basically a shortage of funds, and they got put into the 1%, and they've never come out. We're just unique on this specific one. The other team I kind agree. of made sense. So. Interesting. Other comments or questions from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor of this lease agreement, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed. That item moves forward. Next item. Number 15I, lease agreement between the City of Cheyenne and Cheyenne Airport Board for land to be used for street and alley for compost operations. Staff report. Vicki Nemechek, Public Works. Um, same thing as we've been discussing. This is just for the compost facility. And it, again, the payments will start in October of 2022. And, it, yeah, and includes the 2% in the second, third, and fourth year. Thank you. Comments or questions from the public? Hands raised. None do I have a motion from the committee. I would move to approve an amount not to exceed one hundred and thirty five thousand two hundred and thirty seven dollars. Second. Been moved and seconded. Comments from the committee. Hearing none, all those in favor of this lease agreement, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed. That item moves forward. Next item. Number fifteen J. Lease agreement between the City of Cheyenne and the Cheyenne Airport Board for land to be used for the weed for the weed and pest division. Hi, Vicki. Vicki <laughs> Nemetek Public Works. This is for the weed and pest property that the airport board owns. Um, it's a four-year lease. Um, same thing as the as the last stuff. It'll be the uh, two percent increase in the thir second, third, and fourth year. Comments or questions from the public? Do I have a motion from the committee? I would move to approve an amount not to exceed $15,457. Second. Comments or questions from the committee? Hearing none, all those in favor of this lease agreement, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All, and those opposed? Lose, Mr. Escobel? Sorry, I had a... Sorry, I had some background noise there, and uh, 
If you didn't get a second, I'll second, but I am an eye on that too. Okay, that uh, there are no one, there's no one opposed, that item moves forward. Next item, please. Number 17A, request to expand seating area for consumption relating to the City of Cheyenne Bar and Grill license held by Paris West Restaurant Bar located at 1719 Central Avenue, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Staff report. Mr. Chair, Chris Jones, City Clerk, this is before you um, because the proposed consumption in the sidewalk cafe area was not a part of their original application, therefore it requires governing body approval. And it's just a simple expansion of their consumption area. I might try to answer any questions you might have. Thanks, Chris. Stand by. Although I will say uh, okay. we do need to have it be uh, the motion contingent upon the city engineering building and planning development requirements being met. Important distinction. Yeah. Stand by, Chris. Comments or questions from the public? Do I have a motion from the committee? I would so move um, conditionally with uh, conditional upon approval from all of those departments. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good way to do it. Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded. Comments or questions from the committee? Mr. Aldridge. Uh, Chairman White, too. I'm assuming, Chris, that some of those requirements would be things like the little gating or fencing that will be around the area so we don't have people that have over imbibed falling into the street and that type of thing. Mr. Chair, to Dr. Aldridge, that is correct. They, they have to meet all of the requirements to be able to serve in that area. Okay. Thank you. Other comments or questions from the committee? Yeah, when you're ready. Doc, uh, Mr. Johnson, I almost promoted you to doctor. <laughs> Dr. Johnson. <laughs> that's, that's bad thing. Um, so on um, this one, since there was no map attached, was the um, extended area going to be on um, is it 18th Street or is it going to be on Central? It has the address of Central Avenue, but it doesn't actually say whether it's doing that. I'm guessing because the restaurant on the north side of the building that they would do it patio type extension on 18th Street rather than Central. Central too. Goes down to the driveway. Mr. Chair, through you, I, I'm not exactly sure of the location, but I can get that information to you, Mr. Johnson, okay. during the meeting. Be happy to. I welcome any uh, clarification, but I think having talked with Corey that. Uh, the plan was to have have it on 18th Street. Yeah, and that, that made the most logical sense, but just with the address being on Central, you know exactly what it would be. Mr. Chair, I know they're actively working with the city departments to to do get everything squared away. So, okay. uh, other comments or questions from the committee? Hearing none. All those in favor for this request to expand seating area, please signify by saying aye. 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 No one's opposed. That item moves forward. Uh, as there are no other items on the agenda, this meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.